Sometimes one of the biggest motivating factors to grow on YouTube are things that happen in your personal life, like just crisis moments that compel you to, ha you have to make this work. That's Sean's story, we're gonna talk about it coming up today. Hey guys, my name is Tim Schmoyer and welcome to Video Creators. This channel is all about helping you guys grow a YouTube audience so you can spread a message that reaches people and changes their lives. And that is a really big part of your story is like reaching people, impacting them, helping them grow personally, professionally. So how did you get started on YouTube? I think that my story really starts back in 2003. And that's when I started video at my local church. And so I started doing video before social media started, before mm -hmm. YouTube started. And what was a blessing about that was uh, my youth pastor, Jeff Morris, handed me a camera and Adobe Premiere, which I still edit on today, a well, lot of versions later. Yeah. Um, and Back when it came on CDs? Yeah, when it came out to get <laughs> the CDs like of Creative Club. dollars Yeah, no doubt. And, um, and I started to edit and he said, hey, make weekly video announcements for our youth group. And so that was 52 videos a year. So what a blessing to learn about consistent content. You know, that's kind of a crazy volume, especially back then. But then eventually the senior pastor of the church said, these aren't too bad, make these on the weekends as well. So I was making two videos a week as a volunteer. So I'm, now I'm making 104 videos a year, plus some other story videos and whatnot. So it was such a great education for creating consistent content. Now those videos were horrible. You know, I like to say your first videos are your worst videos. Mine is definitely embarrassing. I feel like I'm having a conversation with a fire hydrant or something. But that was the learning curve, that was the education. And the first YouTube channel I ever managed was my churches in 2007. And the other thing that happened though, that was probably the biggest thing I would say to where we are today, and also really my motivation as far as our story, was during that time I met my wife in uh, 2003 as well. And we got married in 2005, but two years later, she went on a mission trip to the Philippines and got really sick. It triggered a chronic illness in her body. They recovered. We didn't know what it was at the time, but she came home and she was throwing up multiple times a day. And as a husband, I'm worried and I'm wondering, and we literally don't know what's happening. We're just hoping something will change. We started getting um, you know, doctor's advice. It took two years uh, for her to get diagnosed, but it turned out it was called gastroparesis and it's um, paralysis of the stomach. And without going into that, you know, eventually she got down to 82 pounds, almost died. And there was a point in time where she was in the hospital for six days. And it was during that time, I, I, I will never forget it because it was, it was such a dark time. Yeah. It was a scary time. And I was by her bed the whole time in the hospital, six days in a row. And so I had a lot of time to think and a lot of time to worry. But it was those moments where I was starting thinking like, what am I gonna do? We were dual income. We both had, you know, as a young couple, big dreams to, to do stuff. She's working three jobs. I'm volunteering at the church, mm -hmm. you know? And, and eventually I started making a little money, but churches don't pay well. I'm waiting tables at Red Robin. We're trying to figure this stuff out. And it was during those few days that I was like, man, I gotta step up as a husband, as a leader, as a provider. What are we gonna do? And um, you know, the good news is, as we got through it, uh, she actually has a, a gastric stimulator. It's like mm -hmm. a pacemaker for your stomach. As we were getting this, we started to learn what maybe our future is gonna look like a little bit. And at the same time, because of being online, I started to discover, right, that, well, people are making money online. People are doing this YouTube thing, it's very early, but they're building a life on their own terms. And yeah. of course, a lot of people want to do the social media thing for the fame and the fortune and the followers. And ultimately, I don't think that's bad, but I do think that those who really last and make it have deeper reasons. Yeah. And my reason was I wanted, I, I wanted to build income online in particular so I could be at home, so I could work from home, be with my wife, be with my family, so that I could not only take care of our needs, but potentially do whatever uh, we need to do when we get to that family season. And so it was that drive and motivation that really lit a fire on me mm -hmm. to start hustling hard. Yeah. And it was right about 2009 that I, I really just started to go after this thing. Going after YouTube? Going after YouTube. Business or going after YouTube. YouTube. And um, what I discovered, the aha moment was I learned about affiliate marketing. And in particular, the Amazon Associate Program is already around. And so just like any of us that a lot of times start as creators, we take our knowledge and we put it online and we start to uh, just kind of experiment. We, we scratch our own itch. Is the kind of videos that I wish I had helping me pick the right camera, pick the right lenses, the right gear. And I started to um, put those videos out. And even before that, I did some other experiences, uh, experiments on my Sean Cannell channel. Like one video was gift ideas for him. I remember that. It wasn't just affiliate marketing. I was also learning about ranking videos, yeah. about video SEO, search. And I, I learned with a title like that, which I think if you still search it today, gift ideas for him, I think it still ranks number four. Mm -hmm. It's like five, six years old. And I started to see that our Amazon affiliate income was, you know, five bucks a month. But then it was $25 a month. 
then it was $250 a month. And I was like, hmm. Let's uh, see, can we capitalize on this somehow? <laughs> yeah, and I started thinking like, if I just scale this, like if I do more of this and I get better at this, I still hadn't dialed it all in yet, but it was enough of like an aha moment that I really started to build that. Eventually, we built actually a six-figure income just off Ant Amazon, which is crazy. Oh, wow. awesome. yeah, we get something like these days, 170,000 clicks on Amazon links a month. Wow. Um, but it was from there that we began to scale our business too with, with our own products and some other things like that. And so during that high side hustle season, I think what I loved about YouTube the most was that it's a search engine. I was like, sometimes we can only put out one video and then it was a two month break. Sometimes I could put out two videos a week for during summer or something, mm -hmm. I had some time off. I just did the best that I could, but I love the fact that if a video ranked in search, it was really leveraged. I did the work mm -hmm. once, but it worked exactly. for me mm -hmm. on autopilot. And these days, like we look at our real time analytics and we get something like 2,500 to 3,500 views every 60 minutes, mm -hmm. not because of posting new content, right. yeah. but because of building up that library of ranked videos and people in our community too, they're doing this at every level. Even if you're just getting 10 views an hour, I've personally done some things where I went door to door. And I think about that, like if you went door to door, 10 houses an hour, <laughs> an how hour. much work that would be. The fact that I saw that YouTube was so leveraged, it was automating our efforts. Sometimes I think about a ranked video, it's like an employee that you only pay once, but then works for you for free for weeks, months, and years to come. Yeah. What I love is if I watch somebody else uh, you know, um, that was successful, success leaves clues. I knew that like, let's maybe figure out what they're doing. Like, even if it's not working for me yet, I'm gonna keep trying to do it. So I committed to two things. Number one, I committed to keep learning. I mean, I, I, investing in yourself is the best investment you yep. can make. And I think that lifelong leaders are lifelong learners. So I try to read every book, listen to every podcast. You know, I'm watching your stuff. I'm watching everybody's stuff, you know, throughout the years. I'm trying to go to conferences. The reason I wanted to freelance for people and even work probably for less than I should make uh, in that relationship, because I wasn't in it for the money, I was in it for the education. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to, um, I, I would do freelancing for other, like maybe authors and speakers, manage their social media. And I was so pumped about it because I wanted to learn more. I wanted to see yep. their numbers, what's happening, experiment with things and maybe make a few bucks while I was doing it. You actually gave me some advice when we had our Think International channel and I would just say, um, interview with Judah Smith. And you were like, hey, um, that's cool, but like, you're not actually saying what the value of the video is. Why should I click and watch it? That was an yeah. unlock moment, but it, sometimes you have to post videos for like months until you get to that aha, like, oh, that's right. Which is really disappointing. It I is. Know. <laughs> but and it's true. Uh, I'm just on this massive mission to get as much information and education as I could to level up my game, because I knew if I could model the pattern that others are following that it's a pattern, yeah. success leaves yeah. clues. But the second thing was also taking massive action. I think I see where a lot of creators, entrepreneurs get stuck is they get stuck in learning mode and all you're doing is reading books, all you're doing is taking courses and honestly that information doesn't stick if you stay there. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned that we learn by doing, but not exactly. doing only. Right. Sometimes you just take massive action, you post videos, you're not getting results. Right. You need to evaluate, yes. learn, and have someone look at it. It's a combination of those two. Taking massive action, putting out a lot of videos where you're like, shoot, I've been doing it wrong for yes. eight months. <laughs> yeah. But the, uh, that lesson went so deep because I was doing it wrong for eight months and I was that much right. further. And I also like to think that, you know, these days, you know, our newest videos are getting a lot of views and a lot of traffic, but I've posted over 2,000 videos online. Um, I've done a lot for other clients on other channels, for my church, for other people, and then ultimately myself as well. And, and maybe, you know, 1,600 of those were the learning curve. Yeah. What a lot of creators do, as you know, and maybe you guys do too, is they're just looking for, where's the quick, easy button? Where's yeah. the quick, like, success? Like, where's the quick, you know, how do I get there? I also think, I mean, if, just to add one thing, I think just patience and a commitment to the long haul is such a, is such a big deal. Of course, I wanted things to happen fast, especially for my family, for our circumstances. But I also just realized, like, I'm playing the long game. I, I don't need this, or this is, a, I think too many people sometimes too, they're like, I want to start YouTube and I need this to work in like six months. In fact, I'm going to quit my yeah. job and I need this to work in yeah. six months. I think that's a horrible idea. Yeah. I was, that's why Unless you have a lot of back, like that's money. That's true, yeah, Unless maybe you got a ton of money, like, someone's of funding you. Something. Yeah. Um, but that's why like, I was like, I, I, I'm going to keep, because I need to provide for my family. I sometimes see men, and this is a little, maybe a little hard, but if there's like young guys watching, I see them being irresponsible. You need to make sure that you can take care of your family 
while you're building your side hustle. And so that's why I was waiting tables or working these other jobs and hustling so hard. And then an extra time building the side hustle. I actually think about Gary Vaynerchuk, a lot of people know uh, him in our space. What they forget is this, when I think about all the videos I put out, he did the Wine Library TV, a five day a week show, before he ever kind of got big and got on stages and way before he ever got to where he is now with all the YouTube content and videos he's putting out. But he says it took him 50 videos before he even found his voice. And it took him It's actually a, pretty quick. It was pretty yeah, quick. Yeah, to find his pretty voice. Good. And, and, and I mean, he was even, you know, more mature in business, even at that yeah, stage yeah. than a lot of us. Right. But it took him 50 videos to find his voice and it took him a year of posting five days a week before anybody even was watching or paying attention. Mm, that's commitment right there. Commitment. Most people are like, if no one else values this, then I don't value it. I have heard some entrepreneurs, you can get comfortable. Yeah. You can think like you already made it, but you never want to rest on yesterday's uh, success. I right. think a constant commitment to learning, because especially in this space, things are always changing yeah. too. Yeah. Where can people find you, Sean? Think Media is the main channel that I'm doing. And then we also have our channel, Video Influencers. That's where we have a weekly interview show with video influencers. Thank you, man. As well. Different is better than better. And if I was thinking, whether you're just starting or even maybe you're further along in your career but wanting to like get to that next stage and kick in growth again, think about how you can really be different in the world that we're living in.